What's up internet? So today what I want to do is share this latest mural I did on an elementary school in Tampa, Florida. It is different than what I usually do in terms of murals because it's not a face and I painted an animal and there's a lot of solid color rather than a lot of abstract colors and things like that. So I want to share how I put this mural together and some of the tools that I use to travel with to complete this three-day mural. So let's talk about some of the tools that I brought with me because it's different. I brought my uh, weenie rollers, which is one of the best sort of ways to apply paint that has a huge solid color and then some brushes to do some really detailed line edging and then all of my caps I have an assortment of caps that I like to carry with me and then I always carry a razor or scissors to cut different items that I need to maybe it's cardboard maybe it's plastic and then something to pry open uh, cans or something to pry open anything hard with and then I like to take my trays with me I save these because I hate wasting a lot of those trays and I don't have to sort of go to Home Depot to get more. And then I carried my stencil caps or stencil uh, shields to do detailed work. And I also brought my chalk line because I knew there was going to be a lot of hard line edges. So this allows me to get straight lines and tape. I brought tape of different sizes because I just don't know exactly what I will need until I get there sometimes. And to record everything, I brought all of my electronics. I have an extra phone. I have these little time-lapse cameras that work really great outdoors for long periods of time. The uh, holders for that, I brought my Ray-Ban sunglasses to record up close and my drone to get really great shots. And then I'm carrying my extension pole for my uh, rollers and then my tripod for the projector. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the projector, but I'm just gonna carry it just in in case and then I have my latex gloves because I don't want to get paint on my hands because I'm going to use a fair amount of spray paint when I paint the turtle in the design and one of the things that I designed for my practice is a circle maker this right here is like a bearing that uh, has like a 3d printed enclosing and then I I'm able to attach rope to it and then attach it to this other thing that I have uh, that I made is sort of holds chalk so I'm able to make circles however big I need to based on the size of the rope and it uses standard chalk as well. And last but not least are the magnetic can holders that I made a while ago. Basically I made these can holders to hold the cans on anything metal. So the scissor lift that I'm using or the boom lift that I'm using or a ladder that I'm using, I'm able to have these cans hold on to it. That way I'm not having to always bend down to pick a new spray paint color. Now I'm packing everything up in a bag. Usually a lot of this stuff I will put in its own dedicated check bag so that my clothing can be in one and then all my tools can be in the other. So for this project, I was flown out by Tony Crow who organizes Tampa Walls. The original festival got pushed back, but they still wanted to do this project with me at Broward Elementary. And this project, they didn't really uh, give me anything specific to paint. I was able to paint whatever I wanted to. So I used this to experiment uh, for a different direction that I wanted to go. And for this one, it was going to be a lot of solid colors. I wanted to use text. So I wanted to sort of figure out how that would look with my work and get outside of painting people. So I wanted to paint a turtle and like I showed you earlier I used a lot of the tools that I designed in my studio to actually create the circles and the different lines so this little circle maker I was able to make all the circles for the O's and the curves for the P really easy without smashing down masking tape which is what a lot of artists will usually do and now I'm able to just use that weenie roller to just follow those lines and get these crispy edges and for the straight lines, I use this pivot point to hold on to the end of the chalk line. That way I didn't have to use masking tape or have another person hold the end of that chalk line. I was easily able to go from one point to the next point just with the uh, pivot point and the Velcro double-sided tape to make those lines. So this went way faster than if I were to have tried to use just masking tape to make those circles, make those lines. Everything was super accurate. And this is me just going through the wall uh, within, I'd say less than an hour and a half to map out all the letters that I needed to and the different areas that I needed to. 
And once all the lines were mapped out, that's when I broke out the latex paint. And I wanted to use latex paint because it's just a lot more economically uh, friendly when it comes to doing solid colors in a large area. And it wasn't too large where I had to get gallons. Usually these are the sample and the quart size. Uh, so going through with that weenie roller and just using that weenie roller to follow the lines that I made on the wall. So this basically was, I was able to do it right after I put down uh, the lines to map everything out. And for this, I like it a lot, mainly because I didn't really have to mask off a lot of stuff, just the drips at the bottom, that's where we put that uh, plastic. But everything else, I basically just carefully followed the lines, so I didn't have to use any of the tape that I brought to sort of make hard edges or crispy edges. It was just basically going slow and following those lines. And although Tampa is humid, it was about, I would say, 80, 90 degrees uh, during the three days I was there painting the wall. So the paint dried really quick, so I didn't have a problem with wasting time waiting for an area to dry before I went back over with another coat. So from the start of this project to this point right here was probably about three to four hours, which is great for me because after I get a lot of that solid color on, then I can start adding some more abstract elements like this, uh, making uh, those solid sort of blocks break up a little bit as if, you know, it's, there's a wave or there's some sort of action moving uh, that color into the next color. And the plan for this was to make sure that I get these solid colors on first and then move to the turtle next. And because it's Tampa and this elementary school is by a river called the Hillsboro River, I wanted to do something that related to the sea life, the wildlife and conservation. So, so I wanted to paint a turtle. And it's something that I never painted before on a large scale. So I used the doodle grid to get the sketch on there really fast and once I had the sketch on there then I would be able to uh, paint over the letters in the background but you know for me it was different painting something that wasn't sort of a, a, a human figure so it was a, a process for me to figure out how do I make this turtle in my style you know using spray paint on a larger scale and make it look good and look good with the solid letters in the background so that was the uh i guess the the challenge for me which turned out for me super exciting because it turned out great in terms of me being able to paint a turtle uh, that sort of was my style but also fit the situation and the wall as well so overall this project worked out really great mainly because i was able to expand a little bit on what i did in terms of my portfolio pieces what i think a lot of artists should do is expand a little bit because sometimes we get into a rut or we're so familiar with a certain style that we keep to it or a certain subject matter that we keep to it and we sort of uh put ourselves in a box so this helped me get outside of the box of just painting people painting figures and you know making sure that other people know that i can do something different but also make this exciting for me as well because like i said in my other video how i evaluate projects is you know am i going to a whole new network a whole new space yes am i being able to do something totally different yes did it pay well not particularly well but i'm able to expand my horizon when it comes to this project so hopefully you guys like me explaining everything in this project because it was fun for me hopefully i will be in tampa again in december for the official tampa walls in 2023 and you'll be able to see more work like this from me so i will see you guys next time peace